Do you want to do some role play? Yeah. How do you want to do this? I guess I want to fool around. 18, looks like it's going to happen. What do you want to do next? I take all your clothes off. Ooh, natural one. I put more clothes on. What? Now what? I try to impress you with these flowers that I bought you today. Natural one, you're actually holding a gun to a baby's head. What? Well, what do you want to do now? Because I'm getting pretty freaked out. Put the gun down. And I plan to return the child to its mother. Was that a one? Yeah, I called the police. Put the baby down, you animal! I go to take the shot. Ooh, natural one. No, 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 no. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning into Basic Billiards. I am your host, Slith Lord Felix, with the always amazing Sensei Brian from FX Billiards. How are you, boss? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good, good. Um, I see uh, we we were able to catch you moments away before the firing squad arrives. Yes. Uh, but um, <laughs> luckily, the governor let us have this this final podcast together. Um, <laughs> so, all right. So last week, we didn't have a show. Uh, I was at a pool tournament that I was, uh, you know, uh, it was APA is with my team. Uh, you definitely know about this, but maybe the dozen people that watch this podcast do not know. Uh, but yeah, we came in third, well, uh, third, fourth, right? What's, what is that? Quarter semifinalist, right? I guess that's the proper term. Yeah. Right. Um, and it was a hero moment. And I got the hero moment. I got us the win, which is very rare. I always buckle under pressure, you know. Um, now, you did you proud. know? Did you know at the time that you needed to win? Yes, it was the last game of of that match. Okay. Um, I'll paint the picture. I'll paint the picture. Okay, so we go in. Our first two opponents lose. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. Our first two uh, teammates go in. And they lose zero. They win zero matches. So it's three points to the other team each time. All right. So by the time the third player gets in, we're down six to zero. All right. He was able to pull off uh, a miracle win as well. So he got us to six to three. All right. And then the next player got us also to, uh, but no, he got us a six to five. And then I'm the last player. Right, and I actually had to come in. I I had to win it. You know, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. Right, and this was the match to get us into the money. Uh, luckily, they put me up against another four, and uh, yeah, you know, uh, I won uh, two to one. The guy won the first match, and then I and then I came back and won the 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 last uh, three matches to get us into the money. Outstanding. I was praying all day. Or if you can believe it, I was praying all day, hoping for the strength to win. And God said, yes. And as soon as I won that, he says, I'm going to go ahead and take that back. Because <laughs> during the semifinalist match, all those skills and luck shots. Actually, it wasn't luck shots. I'm going to be real. But after all those, uh, all that went out the window <laughs> and ended up back to my my old self in the for the uh, for the second place or for the finalist uh, semifinalist uh, trophy or whatever. Right, but um, you know, well, you you have that win, and one of the things, you know, there's just things that go along with wins and losses, and individual shots, individual matches that a lot of people look past, and that is your ability to pull off of that situation in the future. So you can always pull off of that. Hey, remember when we had when I had to win, you know, so that we advance that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I like to tell the story about how I had spotted this guy. I, I forget what it was, like some stupid amount, like six games in a race to 10. And um, <laughs> he won the first two. Oh, my. And I said, I said out loud, I've won 10 games in a row. And um, he ended up winning. <laughs> but, but I had that to pull from. I've won 10 yeah. games in a row against yeah. guys that... 
you know, somebody I'm spotting six games, right? Yeah. So, um, but he, he ended up he ended up winning. But but that's that is the kind of thing though you can say, you know. I've yeah, I've been in this money situation before. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Just don't ever spot anybody sixty percent of. <laughs> yeah. I don't care who you're playing. You know, no. I'll play better for he wants to spot me six games <laughs> and, give, and give me the break. So yeah, anyway, right. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, but you pull off of those things, you know, later on. No, no, a hundred percent. It's good to have that moment to have that. You're a hundred percent right. And it was like super epic, you know, and and to come home with all of that money. I mean, 120 bucks for two days of work, man. That's uh, that's pretty impressive. I might be able to give up my my second day job, my day job, momentarily. Well, <laughs> let's put it in perspective. Um, you got to factor in the uh, 4,000 hours of practice that you have in your lifetime, and you made about minus 20 cents an hour. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, and, and and you know what? Even if we don't even gotta go that far, let's talk about the beers and the drinks and the food and the lunch because we were there for like ten hours the previous day and then ten hours the next day. Yeah. So and I mean, we I barely broke even. You know what and I the mean? The dues and and all of that. Dues, yeah. Price this of the next is, game. Yeah. yeah. This is kind of off subject, but we do this every week. I, at least I do it every week. No, no, no. Um, no. There's, there's a very good story about. Picasso, he's in a um, he's in a restaurant, and this woman walks over to him. She's like, "Oh my God, I'm a big fan of yours. Can you draw something for me on this napkin?" And he takes the napkin in five minutes, you know, creates a, a work of art on a napkin. She says, "And you know, what can I give you for it?" He said, ten thousand dollars." And she says, ten thousand dollars. It took you five minutes." He said, "No, it took me a lifetime to be able to do this." <laughs> Uh, yeah, you got to put things in perspective. So, yeah, you guys That's lost true. money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was my one teammate. It was funny as hell, man, because he he it brought him to tears. It was, I mean, like honestly, very. This is the only moment that I can say that I had in a pool tournament where it was like it was a movie moment. It was it was me doing getting ready to do the crane kick on Johnny Lawrence. It was that. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> so. Like when I finally kicked Johnny Lawrence in the face, my whole teammates are like, I had one teammate that was like tearing up. He's like, oh my God, I can't believe, you know, all this shit. Yeah. And and at some point, like he, I mean, I guess I was trying, but I was playing like crap. But he, uh, my, I already said his name, but Big Daddy was all, oh yeah, man. Like, hey, we're in the money, we're, we, you know. And I remember my captain was just telling me, he goes, man, you just happy with that hundred, ain't you? <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean i'm like yeah man come on let's let's at least try to you know to go a little further than this you know yeah you don't you don't play leagues for the money you're no. not gonna i mean no. let's put it this way um shane fetter all of those guys have had um smaller paydays in the last year okay in the last right. couple of months so um yeah you know what it's funny too because all right so i'm at a, a place called capone's this is where we had the tournament right and we're playing on the bar box you know the, the small tables and across the hall are the nine foot tables and they're having a 10 ball tournament there so while we're fighting for this uh you know 120 dollars <laughs> 30 you know semi-final prize money Right across, I'd be hearing. I was like, "Okay, so uh, the prize for the ten break, ten ball break and run is now up to three thousand five hundred dollars for the break and run." And I'm like, "What? what? Yeah. <laughs> you, know, like, you gotta say it while we're here." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so, yeah. man. Yeah, but it it is what it is. Like I said, you don't you don't play APA. You, you don't play professionally for the money. You, you gamble for the money. That's where, you know, that's where people make their money. And um, and that becomes harder and harder because it's hard to, everybody knows who you are. Even if you're nobody, they know, they know who you are. Yeah. Um, so now you're spotting some full six games in a race to 10. <laughs> but, yeah, but, just to yeah. make it right. 
I just want your best game. I'm telling yeah. you, you gotta just go with that after a while. But, but um, um, yeah, it's. Uh, I always think it's funny when they they're celebrating some guy, you know, winning a tournament, you know, pro- a professional tournament, and he wins, you know, twenty grand, and they're like, "Oh, nice payday for so and so," and and I'm like, "It's the only <laughs> thing he won this year. It's the only thing he's going to win this year. That's not a yeah. good payday." Yeah. You know, yeah. So and and a lot of these guys don't gamble because they don't have anybody to back them, and they they can't afford to gamble with their own money. And then you got guys like Shane who says on sixty minutes he doesn't gamble, but doesn't I gamble, right? I can put my point my finger at some some Shane money games in the last. Well, let's say since he <laughs> aired that I don't gamble oh. thing. So um, shots fired. Yeah, but it is it is what it is. So. Um, Pool is about gambling, uh, even if it's for drinks or whatever. You know, it is the nature of what we do. It's like you wouldn't. I I shouldn't put it this way because it, it's not this extreme. But you're not going to have a horse race for fun, okay? <laughs> right, and, right. And I it's always like think poker for fun. Yeah, even if I'm playing with my friends or my cousins, yeah. And there's no money on the table because they're not going to gamble with me. I don't care what odds I gave them. But yeah. I feel like I'm gambling because I know if I lose, I've got to wait 20 minutes for these fools to finish their games of eight ball before I get back on the table. I'd right. rather pay them a hundred bucks and not have to sit around and watch them play for a half an hour while I wait. <laughs> so, right. you know, so I think of it as gambling because I'm gambling with my time. You know, that's so, true, that's um, point. but yeah, it, it's, yeah, it is what it is, but it, it's fun. And, um, it's just more fun when you're gambling. So yeah, yeah. Um, it, so, so you have some clips for us. You got some. Ooh, good clips? Do I? All right, I'll tell you what. So yesterday, uh, uh, while I'm waiting uh, to go to my Good Friday Mass, uh, I went to the clubhouse and I and I shot around for a couple of hours, and I gotta say, I don't know. I feel like there's definitely a lot, uh, some improvement, especially from when we first started. Um, let me. Let me get this going here. Okay. All right. So let me go with the bigger screen. All right. I think I can even go bigger. Perfect. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you tell me what you think. Uh, but I got to say, yeah, I'm, uh, you know, not a lot of runs, eight ball runs, but so many close. Anyway, whatever. Let me stop overhyping it. All right. So this is uh, after you, the tournament, right? This is after the tournament. In fact, these are all clips from yesterday. Okay, cool. All right, so let's see what we got here. Here. Ignore this. There we go. I'll start here. That was like a calibration shot. And of course, let me know if you need a pause, fast forward, whatever you need. Sure. Let's let's go back five seconds. Yeah, I thought you were going to play the five in the side. And I think... Yeah, I'm saving it for key ball. Yeah, I, okay, I'm with you. The, the only reason I thought that is because I kind of saw this coming. And um, <laughs> so I was, I was thinking five in the side. It is the best key ball. But also keep in mind, when the eight is in the middle of the table like that, everything's yeah. a key ball. There's not many uh, shots you can't get on the eight there. Now, if it was further into the rack area, it might be a little bit more difficult. But yes, the five is the best key ball, but everything's a key ball. So um, yeah, go back again. Go back before the shot. All right, right there. There's, there's not a ball on the table. You can't get on that eight ball pretty easily. So they're all connected to the eight here. Yes. Right? So, but... um. <laughs> Yeah, I thought you were going to go five in the side. You still might have ended up in trouble, though. The more I look at it, 
It should have probably been five in the corner, and you get on the three. But um, ah, yeah. Just just remember, the closer the eight is to the center of the table, the less you have to over concern yourself with key balls. Much more okay. options I have at the end, huh? Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. And that's a, you know, that's an example of why all the drills that we do, we usually, like one caveat of the drill is you can't touch any of the other balls because we don't want to nudge those balls unless we have to. Unless you have to. Yeah. That's a good idea. Here it is. Very nice. Look at that. Man, that's a I'm home free. Breaker. That's a spirit breaker if you run out. Well, it's a spirit breaker either way. Either your spirit <laughs> or your opponent's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somebody's getting their spirit broken. <laughs> that was a really yep. nice shot, though. I like it. And then, boom, it's my spirit, baby. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> But I included that rack. Usually I don't include that anymore. I try to go like at least further, at least get to the eight. But yeah, yeah that breakout, that was my intention. It didn't happen quite how yet, how I pictured it, but I got the yeah. end result I wanted. Yeah. No, that was um that was a decent shot. Also, um when you make a really good shot like that, yes. It's always good to catch your breath. Whether it was intentional or not, if it was lucky or intentional or whatever happens, when you have a really big shot, it's always a good idea to let the adrenaline come down just a little bit before you Maybe have count to 10 or something. Yeah, you're not on a shot clock, so you take your time. Understood. Um, I don't, I, I never, I never know what I talk about on the channel or not, but, <clears throat> um, but I, I probably told you the story about Frank's towel. Did I ever tell you that story? I think so, so. One of my students is in, in South Korea. His name is Frank. And Frank had this thing where if he made a big shot and it was like one of those ooh and ah moments. Right. He would walk over to his bag and grab the towel out of his bag and wipe down his cue. What this did was it allowed him to recover from what just happened. So he didn't have this adrenaline rush while he was down on the next shot. Okay, so it's, you're not calling a timeout. You're not slow playing. You got a legitimate reason to wipe down your cue. And I call the technique Frank's towel. So um, that's, yeah, you've yeah. told me this, but we've never talked about it on the podcast. Okay. And, and you know what? It's like, of course, of course, that makes all the sense in the world, even though we've talked about it, because look, and, and, and anybody listening to this, maybe I'm sure I'm not alone. Obviously, Frank's towel is a thing for a reason. Yeah, all, a lot of my misses come after a hero shot. A yeah. lot of my misses. Oh, I, I've done it in the last, you know, week and a half where I just made some insane shot. One of those ooh and ah moments and then, you know, missed a money ball or a key ball or, or miscued did something stupid yeah. um sometimes sometimes it's just flat out because i'm laughing at my cousins or my friends because they're like you know they're reacting to the shot and i'm you know i'm laughing at them <laughs> we, we probably miss more shots laughing at each other yeah than um than from stress I mean, because we're right you know we're constantly sharking each other um i gotta <laughs> i gotta tell a quick story you can edit it out. So we're here for it. Being, no, no, no. If it ends up being boring, boring. But I'm playing. I'm playing with two of my cousins. I guess it was last Tuesday. It was before or after a lesson I did. And um, we're we're on two tables. So we're playing eight ball on one table, just me and one cousin. And then the other one, whoever's waiting, is practicing on the table beside us. And um, so my my younger cousin is about to beat me, which is a rare occurrence. They're, they're all decent players, but I don't lose a lot of games to them. So before he shot, I said, I just want you to know, if you beat me, I'm going to go to that other table 
and I'm going to come back faster and stronger. And he was he was laughing so hard he couldn't even he couldn't even shoot. <laughs> That's, that's a bold strategy. <laughs> yeah, it was just so funny. What is the best of the best? You know? yeah. <laughs> I'm coming back faster and stronger. I'm Strong. coming back as the bionic man. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> the $6 million man. Never stop man. me. Yeah, yeah, right. Which nobody under, what, 30 knows who what I'm talking about. I, uh, what? Billion dollar... The what? Six, who? What? The six six million, million, yeah, six man. million dollar man. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, inflation. But yeah, it's a. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, he, those are great shows. I used to watch the Bionic Woman though. That was my show. Yeah, because that's what was on on uh, you know on Fox during the day but when I cut school. Here, here's the stupidest thing that happened in every other episode. Now that we're on the six million dollar man. Of course. He, okay, he's he's got a bionic arm. His right arm is bionic arm. Yeah. And every other episode, there's somebody trying to take off from a helicopter and he holds it down. That doesn't make any sense. It would no matter how strong he is, <laughs> right? It would still take off with him. He'd just be doing huh. pull-ups, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Here we get to see one of the famous oh my god episodes. You remember this? this? Been a jump to shark moment. I oh yeah! Remember Bigfoot and Steve Austin? He's just gonna cold cock him right now. <laughs> oh my god! That is so look bad. at those effects. Yeah. Oh, in slow motion, just to chew up the runtime. <laughs> yeah. And just to put things in perspective, how far we've come. This was the number one TV show for years. <laughs> yeah. Years. They made oh action my. figures out of this dude. Yeah, See, that's $6 million dollar man. He should be dead already because he's got a bionic arm and two bionic legs. What happened to those yeah. ribs? He would have had yeah, fresh I, ribs. Oh, look, yeah, he's about to get hit with a string. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. You know, Bigfoot oh. must be watching this pissed off. Yeah, I had that dude. Yeah. Fucking had him. <laughs> like, he ripped my arm off. <laughs> yeah. And it sparked. What is he, a robot? A robot I know, right? Uh, robot Bigfoot? Robot Ugh, Bigfoot. Sucks. Oh, my God. TV was so bad back then. Anyway. <laughs> That's what made it so great, though. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, when, the... when you look back on it, you're like, people, the whole family was gathered around the TV to watch this. You know? <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a good time. Now it's like yeah. everyone's in their own phone. But okay. let's stop crying about the past and <laughs> let's look. Uh, <laughs> what would and, Steve uh, Austin do with this rat here? I know. What would what would the, a six million dollar man do here? Yeah, he, what I he'd would do. lift up the table with his bionic arm, and all the balls would roll. All the balls would fall in. <laughs> yeah, I would. Shooting a combo here? Wow. It, it was a straight line. You know what I yeah. mean? No, I'm with you. Yeah. yeah. And whether it was intentional or not, you left this this um, ball as an escape route. Anytime you got to yeah. shoot a combination, you want to be getting shape on a ball that's not involved in the combination. Yeah. Now, I, just to bring it back here, this table is not perfect. You can almost tell. Look at the... Yeah, it almost. It almost yeah. I, and and you know, so yeah, I wanted to hit it a lot thicker. Right, but yeah, okay. Yeah, but you know, so you could have stayed on that nine. It, that was my goal. Go nine, ten, and whatever this is. Right. I'm literally pointing at the screen. Nine, ten, and then to go this way. Yeah. That was my goal. Yeah. No, I do that. I tried to pause a guy during a Zoom lesson <laughs> once. I'm, I'm hitting my mouse button. I'm like, hold up, hold up. Why is this pause it? Stupid computer. <laughs> this is 
is an interesting exercise in position. Do I play in the side? Or I try to come out here, put an eight in the corner. And then look what I did. Just yeah. all, so far. Yeah, you just want to tap that in and play the eight in the side in most cases. So you got to make a good one with on the rail. <laughs> you only missed it by a diamond. Seriously. Oh, God, yeah. So that's that's so. This is where we are. This is such an easy looking layout, too, isn't it? It is. It's a very wow. easy layout. You, you shoot the thirteen, then, and then everything else is a duck. Yeah. Um, now, with that, with that, well, with that last one, yeah, that points out the big thing is setting up my shot to the eight. I think I, I tend to be just fine setting every other shot up until it's time to set up the shot to the eight. Well. Yeah, a lot of people, I mean, people text me all the time or at the beginning of lessons, they're like, Brian, I was on the, I was on the key ball and I got out of line on the eight. Yep. Um, the key ball, <clears throat> actually, I'm not going to say this because I'm going to make a video about this. Um, okay. But, but basically my feeling about the key ball is, um, how can I put it without a spoiler? Right. Uh, it's important. Let's just say it's, it's very important. <laughs> it is and, key. <laughs> and yeah, it is key. <laughs> and a lot of people, their runs break down on their key ball and their K2. Um, and they really don't give it the, the attention that it, it should have. All right. But um, you're more likely to lose a game because of what you did to the key ball than, than yeah. just about anything else. It's, it's not about the shot on the eight for most people. Because um, if you if you play the key ball right, you're on the eight with an easy shot, right? Yeah. So, so there you yeah. go. But in that last, uh, that last run, and in fact, hold on, let me... It was this dang shot right here that yeah, ruined it. Yeah, this one kind of screws everything up. Yeah, and it's, I try to hit it soft enough still and, and yeah. thought I was able to, yeah. you know, and then boom. It I almost had to... picked up speed on the way. Yeah. But, um, so go forward. Go forward two shots. So here, you actually did a pretty good job of getting on the nine, I think. Uh, yeah, totally. But then the nine... You know, to, to, this is why we do the two below drill, by the way. Yeah. Um, but you just tap this in. You got the eight in the side. Yeah, I should have totally done that. Yeah. And I it's think that, it's almost the same thing as the hero shot thing. It's that my it's like my adrenaline is too high. I, I, I did not mean it to hit it that hard. And yeah. it seems to be a common theme getting on the eight. I guess my, my blood starts pumping like, oh, shit, I'm about to run this. You know what I mean? And then, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and, you, and you have to hit that with enough speed to get a shot on the eight where if you just touch the nine, you're on the eight. You, you got no speed control to worry about. You got, you know, just an angle. Nobody wants to get positioned on those side pocket shots. And I've heard it said that Earl Strickland said, um, you know, he hates the side pocket so much they should be removed from the table. <laughs> um, I don't know if he actually said it, but I've watched Earl run hundred ball racks and a third of the balls are going in the side pocket. So yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's bullshit. Yeah. I'm gonna give up a third of the table. Again, yeah. once again, I'll play anybody. If they're they're not allowed to shoot in the side pockets, I'll play anybody. Give me the Yeah, break. seriously. Yeah. Give me the break and, and you can't shoot in the sides. I'll take that. Yeah side shots side pockets do not scare me as much. It, ironically they screw me up a lot. You know, uh, I guess it just depends on the angle. And so, I'll again, I'm not scared. I'll so I'll take a shot if it's a like a thick cut. Like if it's uh, like if the it, let's say the ball's here, you know what I mean? And I got the the cue here, and it's like really tight to get in the pocket. Some if you hit it soft enough, you can make something happen. You know what I mean? But yeah. it is it's it's, it's very risky. Well, a lot of people don't realize how much pocket they have available on those side pockets. Um, 
I, I, and I may have talked about this before. I had a moment playing street pool with a guy that, I mean, this has been a years ago, but um, a guy I was evenly matched with. And one day he's shooting balls in the side pocket like it was the end of the world. And um, I'm like, you know, I went home and started shooting side pocket shots from all like crazy angles that I didn't, it would have never occurred to me to shoot before. Yeah. And it just opened up a whole world to me of, of the possibilities, you know, from some of those angles. So, um, yeah, you got to be willing to, to shoot them. Okay, so let's see. This uh, easy this ass run out. Time. Yeah, we're already shooting the wrong ball. So and, <laughs> that's awesome. So, uh, and, and to be clear, this is my, my, my uh, routine pretty much okay. is I'll set up a rack. Right, I try to run it, break and run. All right. The second that breaks down, right? Like, let's say I get solids and I miss the solids, then what I'll do is I'll switch to stripes. If I don't run those out, I go back to the solids and any and take them all out of the the pockets and put it back on the table and I roll them uh, random. Right. Okay. And I go back and forth, whichever has like you know, so, so I go that way. Uh, so this is what just happened to be the layout I got on the eight ball on the last run, and then here, it's just the solids. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, just the stripes, and I threw them out randomly, and they happen to be this freaking like this lucky. This this was not intentional. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm I'm shooting. I think I already said I'm shooting the um the thirteen yeah. first. Right here. Yeah. Okay. And then from there, I got you go ball to in here. hand. Yeah. If I got ball in hand, give me this layup on this 13 um it's like my my joke about i was going to get on it like i would always <laughs> when when one of my guys was racking i'd say well what were you gonna do about the 13 oh i was going to get on it i'm like well now you're getting on it with the rack because <laughs> you never yeah. got there <laughs> so um they get to pick it up directly <laughs> exactly yeah we left it out of the pockets for you so you could get to it easy um, I, I will say my intention right here is tap this in to get on the yeah. 13. I knew it wasn't going to be like I wouldn't get the ball here. Well, I was hoping to get it around here rather, but it didn't, didn't work out that way. And I'm all for taking a problem shot like the 11 yeah. to solve another problem shot. Okay. But you but. can get on that 11. You've got a couple opportunities those 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 pocket hangers yeah get on the 11. so this is not a terrible shot this is not a terrible idea yeah okay not the route i would have taken but it doesn't make it really bad because the 11 is a you know can be a problem shot yeah the one thing can... you didn't do what didn't that I do? a lot of uh, one thing you didn't do that a lot of of intermediate players let's just say will do which is a mistake is to shoot the 11 into that other hanger and to try to leave the 11 sitting in front of the pocket. Right. Yeah. They do it all the time. I'm like, yeah, you, you gain nothing. You gain nothing. <laughs> they think they blocked the pocket. They held the pocket. They created another hanger. Think about how many times somebody shoots that combination and then the 11 rolls back onto the short rail or something. Yeah. It'll end up like here or no, it'll end up like here. Yeah. And right I'm, up, right up against his rail right. or, or here. Yeah. You're That's right. When I ask them the same question. How'd that work out for you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, can you really love tap it just enough to? Yeah. So yeah, no, exactly. I ruled that out. Yeah. Yeah. And it's for. It's interesting. There's certain things that the same level of person does repeatedly. All right. That don't necessarily seem wrong to them, but the guy that shoots that combination. It's the same guy who can't hit it soft enough <laughs> to do right. it the right way. You know, those two things kind of go hand in hand. Absolutely. So, anyway, okay, well, let's do it. Let's, do, let's look at this easy ass run out, or is it? How will I? How will the Sith Lord f this up? So here's a common mistake also so I'm glad you made that shot but just because your intent 
once you get on that 13 and you got on it, yeah. it doesn't make it your next shot. You could have said, hey, I'm five feet away from this shot. Let me take another shot that puts me closer to it. But you, you had options, right? Yeah. Okay. And again, we have a, you know, a um, target rich key ball here. So you don't need to worry too much about position. And um, I like that you're keeping the side pocket for your, for your key ball. That works. And this is a good angle. So yeah, that worked out. Yeah, if that worked. I mean, shit. If it didn't work out, I think you might have uh, just let me go. And I, um, yeah. And I think if you shot that a hundred times. Probably 85, 90, you're, you're out. Yeah. The difference between my pattern where I shoot the 13 first is I think 5% more you you run out. That's all. Mm. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I think that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, th and those are the way, little things I'm learning. Yeah, and by the way, if I shot it 100 times, I might do it three different ways because, you know, I might not shoot the 13 first. Depends on what day it is, how I feel. Right. You know, who I'm Making playing. a challenge. Never. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I like you said, there's guys. so many different key balls. Absolutely. I, I know guys that, that play APA that are so good that they, they'll take like patterns that just don't make any sense just because they're bored. <laughs> like they just yeah. one, so... one guy yeah, one guy that would always take the hardest pattern. Um <laughs> And when I when I played APA, I was so bored. I wanted to, I wanted to play left-handed. My cousins wouldn't let me, but I'm like, let me let me play every every game left-handed, like till the end of the season. And they're like, nah, we're not doing going to do that. Yeah, right. Why do that? <laughs> and and part of it is because my handicap did not reflect my left hand. You know, oh, right, right. <laughs> I was ranked where I was because of my right hand. So if I if I did that, I probably would not have won. A lot of games so um it, it didn't it didn't make sense but that's how bored i was sometimes with some of the matches it's like oh, I'll, I'll play it left-handed so, um, um yeah so yeah no it was uh what was it gonna say? as far as this layout right here and I, you know i meant to start asking you this before i start running this rack or before i start running or trying to run a rack is where would you start where would you end what are you noticing well, with then, ball at hand, once again, the eight is in the middle of the table, so I'm, I'm happy with anything. Um, with ball in hand, I'm probably playing the two ball first. It's just difficult to get on. Not, not just to get on, but to get on in a way that I can get to the other balls. So if I take my ball in hand and I play the two, I can get on the, um, the one ball pretty easily. So okay. I can finish that end of the table and then come back down to this end. Oh, okay. Okay. So so you you start here, bang, and then work your way down yeah. this way. I'm going okay. two one five and then probably um five three four seven six eight, something like that. Okay, okay. All right. So let's see. So I start with the seven. And by the way, I understand the, the logic of playing these two first, but um, see, this this could have been dangerous. That worked out, but just trying to get on that two ball like this is... <laughs> a dangerous game. That pocket's right there. Right. Yeah, that's well, oh, which actually, I'm so, yeah, that actually, uh, I remember what I was going to say earlier. Yeah, I'm not quite at the place of okay i need to shoot the three to get the you right here so i can do this and you know what i mean i'm not quite there but i'm more in the range of i need to get in this area i need yeah, to get like in this so. area you know what i mean right like to give myself like for example here it's like i need to get here so i have all these options of different balls i can hit you know and to figure out what where to go from there yeah so my well <laughs> 
if you're if you're not playing position, getting in the middle of the table, it's always a good idea. But but go back to the two ball shot. So you did a good job of getting on this two, but now you want to play the one. The one puts you. The one is connected to the five. The five is not necessarily do? connected to the one. So by drawing right. back here, you've given yourself possibly some angles, some some choices. Like the three is a is yeah. a good choice here, but playing the five, you know, you had to get fortunate to get on that one in the side that you could have been on anyway. Yeah. And I see problems with the three and the four. Like I don't right. know. So yeah. yeah, now we're on kind of on the wrong side of everything. Yeah, most runs break down. It's usually one shot that that makes the difference. I mean, I shouldn't say that. At your level, is very often one shot, shot out of sequence. That can Look make at a that, difference. Though. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> can we appreciate how APA that was? Well, I, I knew I was afraid. Uh, I, I will say this. I'm giving, not giving myself enough credit here. I saw this as the I'm not scratching with this shot. Yeah. And I need to not, get position. And that's I a legitimate thought. Right. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what was going to happen once it hit. Right. But I was like, maybe I'll have a, a shot in the in the corner here. Or, you know what I mean? But this was like really, oh, okay, cool. No, that was that was a legitimate thought. Um, so let's go back to that shot. Let's go back in a sec for a second. Okay. So here, the I I think I think I would have avoided the eleven altogether, but Try I don't mind it? that you. Hit, so I might have drew it. Oh, okay. It's just the nature of my game. I would have shoot shot some draw, come off the short rail, and then back out. But um, okay. the idea that you recognize that you were going to run into the 11 is fine. And also hitting it at this speed, whether it was intentional or not, it was. really benefited you because you, if you, you know you're going to hit the 11. All right. This is America's favorite scratch shot. You know yeah. you're going to hit the 11. You don't know how you're going to hit it. So you might as well hit it with some pace because you're not going to naturally be on that four ball. So, right. um, so yeah, I can, I can see why, why you would shoot this. I'm so. thinking worst case, if I don't hit it hard enough, I could end up here. Right. And it's, a, it's America's favorite scratch shot all over again. Exactly. So yeah, so, it's not a, know. it's not a bad idea. And that was very advantageous. Again, I wasn't practice. I wasn't planning on that double kiss or whatever that, you know, that right. double hit. I don't think I finished this run either. Maybe I did. I, I fucking choke on it as usual. Yeah, you overshot that about an inch and a half, two inches or something. Yeah, totally. There it is. Yeah. Get to get all that far to go so far. That was to quote Lincoln Park, <laughs> you know, in the end it doesn't even matter. <laughs> well, yeah, and that was a you know, relatively easy layout with um a bunch of hangers and stuff like that. And and uh, those are the ones that will get you. You know, your attention drops, you you know that it's an easy an easy run and you just don't give it the attention. You know, it's it's interesting because it, it kind of falls in that category um, where people are playing where there's a problem. Okay, so um, I'll give you an example. I've got a guy. He's got um, he's got shoulder issues, um, just a number of different things, and he's like, "Yeah, um, I've actually played better with my bad shoulder." And he like doesn't understand it because I won't even practice. By the way, if I have a, a yeah. twisted ankle, and I I used to play so much basketball that I you know I kept twisted ankles, but um, 
but I wouldn't even practice with a twisted ankle because I didn't want to develop a muscle memory where I was favoring, you know, the weight distribution was off or whatever. Anyway, right. I've had people who suffering an injury have played some of their best pool and they don't understand why. And I tell them it's usually because now you're paying attention. It raises your awareness. Exactly. You're Wow. You're, you're stepping up your mental game to compensate for your shoulder. Now, if you can do that, you know, all the time, that's when you move up, you know? And, um, yeah, because, I mean, everybody, I think, at least at my level, everybody has lost games messing around with their friends that they never would have lost in competition. Right. And I'm sure some people were vice versa. But, right. um, you know, I always... I always say, I wish to God I practiced the way I actually play a match, which is the reverse of what a lot of people say. They say, oh, I practice well, and then I get in a match and I'm nervous. I'm just yeah. the opposite. When I'm in a match, that's I'm in the moment. But in practice, you know, I'm listening to stuff, um, books on tape or, um, or music or watching or the TV's on or something like that. Yeah. And... Um, then I have a bad practice session. So, yeah, you gotta you gotta practice the way you play and play the way you practice. Um, gotcha. Ab- absolutely. I know uh, we're approaching the end. I'll tell you yeah. what. I'll do a. Uh, we'll end it on a high note, real quick. One okay. final minute long, two minute clip. Uh, any and again, this is relatively easy layout. No no stripes on the table. Um, any. Anything you want to? Where would you start? What would you end? What do you see in there? I I can't oh, see the red because I'm an idiot. <laughs> I will. Bad if producer. I will use my psychic powers and yeah. say, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, there it. All right. So help me out with the colors here. I think that's the eight on the spot. Yeah, yeah, and and, and that is something I do. I put, I, I put the eight in the middle. Okay. So we got okay. the eight on the spot that looks like the yeah. four on the rail closest to you, right? Right here, yes. Okay. All right. Um, you start because with Because I don't like to shoot balls that are below the eight, yeah. I'm going to give some attention to that one and two. All right? But okay. you're on the right ball because those balls yeah. do not go just anywhere. So you're you're doing the right thing here. Sweet. Okay. Good, good. interesting because you clearly recognize that you want to get those one to one and two out you're going way out of your way to get to it so that is too much speed on that you could have just nudged that nudged it, right. yeah. now you would have to do something something special some magical i probably would shoot the five. Oh, you know what i forgot that i was thinking that was the eight down there so that was the four so yeah, yeah. You, did, you shot the right ball Nothing is easy about this, though. Because you got the two and the seven parallel to each other. Yeah. And um, and then the eight is in the loop as well. And there's a power drill going off in the background on top of that. Yeah. I have the volume low. Yeah, I hear it. I hear it. That's all right. If you can shoot with that, you're doing okay. Earl has to stop the game because somebody sneezed. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Which I don't get because Earl grew up playing under, you know, stressful situations. Yeah. And um and a lot of people don't know this because they haven't seen the old videos. But if you watch like a straight pool match from the 60s, the referee literally walks around right behind you. Like he's, you can reach back and touch this dude. He's right behind you. And he's calling out the shots as you shoot. (laughs) So there's a guy, arms reach from you, going six in the corner. 
seven in the side. I'm like, as you're taking your shot, oh, like, as you're shut up. taking your shot, and nobody yeah, flinches right. because it was normal. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. sure the first time it's nerve wracking. You had to deal with it, and then after that, it gets easier. Yeah, but um, yeah, guy sneezed, and Earl like shut down the building. He's like, "Oh, what? This guy's this guy's uh, sharking me over there." <laughs> <laughs> God. Overthinking the uh, the shot, yeah, maybe. That's all right. It's but I am chalking. Oh, another speed control thing. This is yeah. Um, if we avoid a scratch here. This is a good shot. There you go. Good job. Yeah. So. Then again, we'll end it on a high note. Very well. So, um, absolutely. I'm sure you have some footage, but you, you mentioned earlier um, about your improvement since we've been working together. I probably have some footage from like our first or second lesson. I'm sure, you know, you know, I always post your post the lessons when we were doing them in real time. Right. Um, I would post the lessons on our special YouTube channel. And um, so it might be some of that up there. You should look Whoa. back and see if you can if you can find some of those old links because I may have taken some down, but um, I think over time I might have taken some down because there's probably a thousand. If I, I mean, you only see the ones where you have the link, but yeah. um, I have always between twenty five and thirty zoom students so let's do the math you know th let's go with 25 25 students a week 50 weeks a year all right and everybody's got you know a video up so that's a lot of videos so this is over a thousand um so i i do take them down at some point but um yeah, we, we might be able to find some of that old stuff and see, you know, what you're doing different today than you did then. It'd be interesting to watch. Yeah, these right. are the, one of some of my original shorts. Um, uh, yeah, I, I have them up and running. I'm going to end up finding them, but I am uh, holding you past. I, I, I think your execution is in six minutes, so I'm sure you want to talk to your family and maybe uh, set your other affairs in order. So I'm sorry for holding you up. At least yeah. we got one final podcast here. <laughs> well, get to impart some knowledge. I have some inside information on the warden. So, um, <laughs> yeah. as as he gets those pictures that I sent him. I'll be getting a call any minute now. Governor, Governor, let's go, baby. Let's make it happen. <laughs> All right. Have a great day. Hit, hit like and subscribe to Save Sensei Brian. <laughs> Never. <laughs> God bless you all. All right, man. Happy all right. Easter to those who celebrate. Take care, Brian.